I'm Mark Halley, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. The day has arrived. The day you get to fill your new saltwater tank and make it salty. There are a couple ways to get that done, and I'll walk you through each of them. Way number one, get water out of your buddy's saltwater tank. This approach seems to make sense as their tank is already established, but it comes with a risk I'll help you avoid. The risk of fish diseases. Even if your buddy's fish look completely healthy and your buddy promises you that they are healthy, you can't be 100% sure. Better to err on the side of caution and keep any potential fish diseases out of your tank. Thanks bro, but no thanks. Way number two, buy pre-mixed salt water from your local fish store. Most local fish stores that have a saltwater section also sell pre-mixed salt water. It's convenient and usually not very expensive. You're gonna need some five gallon jugs to fill the tank unless you wanna make several trips. If you don't wanna get your hands wet, which is strange because this is a hands-on hobby, this is the route for you. Way number three, purified fresh water called RODI water that you purchase from your local fish store and then use the salt included in your budget saltwater aquarium kit to mix up your own salt water. This is a good route if your local fish store doesn't sell salt water. Way number four, Purchase an RODI unit to purify your water before adding salt. An RODI unit removes chlorine and contaminants from your tap water, making the water coming into your saltwater tank very clean. Using RODI water can reduce the risk of algae outbreaks and keep pollutants out of your saltwater tank. So why am I not recommending you only use RODI water for your tank at this point? Because this is a budget saltwater aquarium build and you're just getting started. You may not want to spend the money on an RODI unit and make the effort to install it and maintain it. If that's you, Keep these things in mind. Number one, as you progress through your saltwater tank career, you're going to want an RODI unit. Therefore, keep it on your wish list. Number two, using tap water for a saltwater tank is a calculated risk. By using tap water, your tank can be more prone to algae outbreaks, especially if your tap water is of poor quality. And in this series, I'll show you how to manage your tank so that algae outbreaks are less numerous if they happen at all. Now, would I like to see you using RODI water? Yes. Is everyone going to do that? No, and instead of being a stick in the mud and saying the only way for your tank to be successful is to use RODI water, I'll educate you on how to manage your tank knowing that you use tap water for the time being. Note when I say tap water, I mean dechlorinated tap water, which is the next way to fill your saltwater tank. Way number five, dechlorinated tap water. This method involves using tap water out of your faucet and adding a water conditioner to neutralize chlorine and other water contaminants. Here's a hint, the budget saltwater aquarium kit includes a water conditioner. All right, the different ways to get water to fill your saltwater tank is out of the way. Now let's talk about actually getting the tank wet and salty. Note, never add salt to a saltwater tank with animals in it. Your tank is empty, so you're okay. Just make sure you don't add salt directly to your tank once you have fish and corals in it. Step one, pour the water into your tank slowly so you don't disturb your masterpiece of aquascaping. Once your tank is full, you may need to reach in and even out the sand that got moved around during the tank fill. Step two, add the dechlorinator included with your budget saltwater aquarium kit, following the instructions on the bottle. Step three, if you didn't buy salt water from your local fish store, add about a quarter of the bag of salt in the bag that came with your budget saltwater aquarium kit. Don't go overboard, one quarter of the bag is fine for now. Now is the time to place the hang on bag filter, insert the media pad, and fill the filter with water. Plug in the filter and make sure water starts flowing through the filter. Next, add the heater. But wait, the kit includes two heaters. Which one do you use? The budget saltwater aquarium kit that I've laid out for you comes with an upgraded heater. Why did I upgrade the heater? Because heater failures are the number one source of aquarium emergencies. Therefore, I upgraded the heater to give you a more reliable heater. And this is a heater that you can keep with you as you upgrade your tanks. As for the smaller heater that came with your kit, keep it around because you're gonna need it for a topic that I'll cover in a future episode. Set the temperature on the heater by turning the red dial on the top of the heater to 77 degrees. Then install the heater in the tank and plug it in. The orange light on the heater will turn on if your water needs heat. Pro tip, water and electricity don't mix. To help prevent water from your tank getting into electrical outlets, install a drip loop. The drip loop is nothing more than a section of the electrical cord that extends below the electrical outlet. If water was to drip down the cord, the water will stop at the drip loop and avoid the outlet. Next, install the thermometer included on the kit. 
Here's a hint, the thermometer goes inside the tank and the magnetic round piece goes on the outside. Now wait until your tank heats up to around 77 degrees. Anywhere from 76 to 80 degrees is fine. Once your tank is up to temperature and the filter is running, you'll need to see how salty the water is in your tank. How salty your water is is called the salinity of your water. And you check the salinity of your water with the refractometer that I included in your budget saltwater aquarium kit. Now the refractometer is another upgrade that I made for you. You can use this refractometer on the budget tank and throughout your saltwater tank career. And refractometer is a lot more accurate and reliable than those swing arm hydrometers. I'm setting you up for success. That's why I got you a refractometer. To use a refractometer, first calibrate it with the included calibration fluid. To do that, fold back the lens cover and add a couple drops of calibration fluid. Then close the lens cover, making sure there are no air bubbles trapped between the lens cover and the lens. Then look through the eyepiece on the refractometer and look for the blue horizontal line. It should line up to about 1.025 or 35 on this line over here to the right. If it is below or above the 1.025 or 35 line, then grab a small screwdriver included with your refractometer and slowly turn the adjustment screw until the blue line lines up right here. Now your refractometer is calibrated and ready to go. To check the salinity of your tank's water with the refractometer, use the included eyedropper to place a couple drops of tank water from your tank on the lens of the refractometer. Close the lens cover, making sure there are no air bubbles between the lens cover and the lens. Then look through the eyepiece and see where the blue line intersects the horizontal grid. If you follow my directions to only add a quarter of the bag of salt included in the budget saltwater aquarium kit, then you'll likely be far below the 1.0 or 35 parts per trillion line. As long as the blue line is below 1.025 or 35, then add two cups of salt to the tank. Let the salt dissolve over the course of several hours and then recheck your tank's salinity. Add salt as needed until you're up to 1.025 or 35 parts per trillion. If all that refractometer stuff sounds too complicated to you, or you'd like a nice upgrade to your saltwater tank program that you use forever, the Hanna Salinity Tester is for you. With the Hanna Salinity Tester, all you have to do to check your tank's salinity is stick the tester in your tank's water and you got a salinity reading. Done and done. Once you've reached the 1.025 or 35 parts per trillion range, and your tank's temperature is between 76 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit, you're ready to cycle your tank, which we'll discuss in the next Budget Tank Series episode.